everybody who's not been here before, this is a new room. It's new rules. Uh, it's a new month. We've even got cute little uh, stickers for our staff so we can come in because we want to make this important. This is impeachment because we've done such a terrible job of it in this committee before. But what's not new is basically what's just been reiterated by the chairman. What's not new is the facts. What's not new is it's the same sad story. What's interesting, even before I get into to my part of my opening statement, was is just what was just said by the chairman. We were we went back to a redo of Mr. Mueller. We're also saying, quoting him, saying the attention of the American people should be on foreign interference. I agree with him completely, except I guess the American people did not include the Judiciary Committee because we didn't take it up. We didn't have hearings. We didn't do anything to delve deeply into this issue. We passed election bills, but did not get into the in-depth part of what Mr. Mueller talked about, taking his own report and having hearings about that. We didn't do it. So I guess the American people doesn't include the House Judiciary Committee. You know, the interesting, we also just heard an interesting discussion. We're going to have a lot of interesting discussion today about the Constitution and, and other things, but we also talked about the founders. What's interesting is that the chairman talked a lot about the founders from the quotes, and, and again, this is why we have the hearing, about the founders being concerned about foreign influence, but what he also was, didn't quote was the founders being really, really concerned about political impeachment because you just don't like the guy. You haven't liked him since November of 2016. <coughs> The chairman has talked about impeachment since last year when he was elected chairman. Two years ago, on November 6th, 17th, before he's even sworn in as chairman. So don't tell me this is about new evidence and new things and new stuff. We may have a new hearing room. We may have new mics. And we may have chairs that aren't comfortable. But this is nothing new, folks. This is sad. So what do we have here today? You know what I'm thinking? I looked at this, and what is interesting is there's two things that have become very clear. This impeachment is not really about facts. If it was, I believe the other committees would have sent over recommendations for impeachment. Now they're putting it on this committee because if it goes badly, I guess they want to blame Adam Schiff's committee and the HIPC and others want to blame this committee for it going bad. Um, but they're already drafting articles. Don't be even fooled. They're already getting ready for this. We've already went after this with the Ukraine after numerous failings of Mueller, Cohen, annulments, the list goes, emoluments, the list goes on. But the American people are actually failing to see us legislate. But if you want to know what's really driving this, there's two things. It's called the clock and the calendar. The clock and the calendar. Most people in life, if you want to know what they truly value, you look at their, you look at their uh, checkbook and their calendar. You know what they value. That's what this committee values. Time. They want to do it before the end of the year. Why? Because the chairman said it just a second ago. Because we're scared of the elections next year. We're scared of the elections that we'll lose again. So we've got to do this now. The clock and the calendar are what's driving impeachment, not the facts. When we understand this, that's what the witnesses here will say today. What do we have here today? What is really interesting over the today and for the next few weeks is America will see why most people don't go to law school. No offense to our professors. But please, really, we're bringing you in here today to testify on stuff that most of you have already written about, all four, for the opinions that we already know, out of the classrooms that maybe you're getting ready for finals in, to discuss things that you probably haven't even had a chance to, unless you're really good on TV or watching the hearings for the last couple of weeks, you couldn't have possibly actually digested the Adam Schiff report from yesterday or the Republican response in any real way. Now, we can be theoretical all we want, but the American people is really going to look at this and say, huh, what are we doing? Because there's no fact witnesses planned for this committee. That's an interesting thing. Frankly, there's no plan at all except next week an ambiguous hearing on the presentation from the, HIPC, the other committee that sent us the report and Judiciary Committee, which I'm not still sure what they want us to present on, and nothing else. No plan. I asked the chairman before we left for Thanksgiving to stay in touch. Let's talk about what we have because history will shine a bright light on us starting this morning. Crickets. Until I asked for a witness the other day. And let's just say that didn't go well. There's no whistleblower. And by the way, it was proved today that he's not or she's not afforded the protection of identity. It's not in the uh, statute. It's just something that was discussed by Adam Schiff. We also don't have Adam Schiff who wrote the report. He said yesterday in a press conference, I'm not going to. I'll send um, staff to do that. He's not going to, but you know, to me, if he was wanting to, he'd come begging to us. 
But you know, here's the problem. It sums it up very simply like this. Just 19 minutes after noon on Inauguration Day 2017, the Washington Post ran the headline, The Campaign to Impeach the President Has Begun. Mark Zad, who would later become the attorney for the infamous whistleblower, tweeted in January 2017, The coup has started. The impeachment will follow ultimately. And in May of this year, Al Green says, If we don't impeach the president, he'll get reelected. If you want to know what's happening, here we go. Why did everything that I say up to this point about no fact witnesses, nothing for the Judiciary Committee, which spent two and a half weeks before this hearing was even held under Clinton, two and a half weeks, we didn't even find your names out until less than 48 hours ago. I don't know what we're playing hide the ball on. It's pretty easy what you're going to say. But we can't even get that straight. So what are we doing for the next two weeks? I have no idea. The chairman just said an ambiguous hearing on the report, but nothing else. If we're going to simply not have fact witnesses, then we are the rubber stamp hiding out back, the very rubber stamp the chairman talked about 20 years ago. What a disgrace to this committee to have the committee of impeachment simply take from other entities and rubber stamp it. You see, why do the things that I say matter about fact witnesses and actually hearings and actually having this a due process? Because, by the way, just a couple of months ago, the Democrats got all sort of dressed up, if you would, and said, we're going to have due process protection for the president and good fairness throughout this. This is the only committee in which the president would even have a possibility. But no offense to you, the law professors. The president has nothing to ask you. You're not going to provide anything he can't read. And his attorneys have nothing else. Put witnesses in here that they can be fact witnesses who can be actually cross-examined. That's fairness, and every attorney on this panel knows that. This is a sham. But you know what I also see here is quotes like this. There must never be a narrowly voted impeachment or an impeachment supported by one of our major political parties or imposed by another. Such an impeachment will produce divisiveness, bitterness, and politics for years to come and will call into question the very legitimacy of our political institutions. The American people are watching. They will not forget. You have the votes. You may have the muscle, but you do not have the legitimacy of a national consensus or of a constitutional imperative. The partisan coup d'etat will go down in infamy in the history of the nation. How about this one? I think the key point is that the Republicans are still running a railroad job with no attempt at fair procedure. And today, when the Democrats offered amendments, offered motions in committee to say we should first discuss and adopt standards so that we know we're dealing with, standards for impeachment that was voted down or ruled out of order. When we say the important thing is to start looking at the question before we simply have a vote with no inquiry first, that was voted down and ruled out of order. So frankly, the whole question of what material should be released and what is secondary, but that's all we discussed. The essential question, and here it is, which is to set up a fair process as to whether the country put this country through an impeachment proceeding. That was ruled out of order. The Republicans refused to let us discuss it. Those are all Chairman Nadler before he was chairman. I guess 20 years makes a difference. This is an interesting time. We're having a factless impeachment. You just heard a one-sided presentation of facts about this president. Today we will present the other side, which it gets so conveniently left out. Remember, fairness does dictate that, but maybe not here because we're not scheduling anything else. I have a Democratic majority who has poll tested what they think they ought to call what the president they think he did. Wow, that's not following the facts. We have a, 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 just a deep-seated hatred of a man who came to the White House and did what he said he was going to do. The most amazing question I got in the first three months of this uh, gentleman's presidency from reporters was this. Can you believe he's putting forward those ideas? I said, yes, he ran on them. He told the truth, and he did what he said. The problem here today is this will also be one of the first impeachments the chairman mentioned. There was two of them, one that before he resigned before, the one in Clinton, in which the facts, even by Democrats and Republicans, were not really disputed. In this one, they're not only disputed, they're contradicted of each other. There are no set facts here. In fact, they're not anything that presents an impeachment here except a president carrying out his job in the way the Constitution saw that he sees fit to do it. This is where we're at today. So the interesting thing that I come to with most everybody here is this may be a new time, a new place, and we may be all scrubbed up and looking pretty for impeachment. But this is not an impeachment. This is just a simple railroad job. And today's is a waste of time because this is where we're at. So I close today with this. It didn't start with Mueller. It didn't start with a phone call. You know where this started? It started with tears in Brooklyn.